In this video, we'll see how to add security configuration. This will be the place where we actually add our filter to uh, Spring security filters. And we will also specify the JWT authentication filter. To do so, let's create a new class inside the config package, new Kotlin class, and I'll call it security configuration. Security configuration. Excellent. The first thing I would like to annotate that with configuration to make this admin, which contains config. And the second one will be enable web security. If we go to this annotation, we'll see that we must add this annotation to a configuration class to have the Spring security configuration defined in any web security configurer, which is not true, but more likely by exposing a security filter chain. And this will be our case. So. Let's get back to security configuration. Let's inject authentication provider. Private vol authentication provider. And let's make use of the interface. The next thing I would like to introduce a new bin. bin and this bin will inject two things. HTTP security and JWT authentication filter bin, which we implemented in the previous video. Let's call it security filter chain. Fun. Security filter chain. As I mentioned, HTTP will be of HTTP security. And the second thing, JWT authentication filter. The authentication filter. Uh, the bin type will be default security filter chain. Default security filter chain. Instead of block, let me use equal sign and let's start building our filter chain. The third thing will be disabling the CSRF protection. It is enabled by default and in most cases not needed, but in real life projects, please learn a bit more about CSRF attacks and whether your code base is vulnerable or not, because this depends on the whole project, not only the backend in this case. Nevertheless, in order to disable that or to work with it, you must hit dot CSRF and right here it disable. Excellent. The next thing I would like to specify is that we want to authorize HTTP requests. So in this place, I will simply provide a map for Spring Boot of endpoints and how users can access them. So for example, that this endpoint should be accessed only by admins, etc. So this is the place where we will be doing that. Authorize HTTP request. And first, it let's specify the endpoints to which we would like to permit all users. So the first endpoint will be API auth. The second one will be auth slash refresh. And the third one will be slash error request matchers api of slash api of refresh error this one will be used to generate access token this one will be used to generate refresh token and what with this one right well, it is because the way Spring handles errors internally. Without that, every exception we throw in our code base will return 403 forbidden. And as you saw when we were implementing the API, we use 404 not found, 400 bad requests and different types. But instead, if we would throw out any error, even specifying explicitly what HTTP status code it should return, it would end up being 403 forbidden. Anyway, we can hit permit all, which means that all requests to these patterns will be permitted without JWT token. Additionally, we have the slash API user endpoint, uh, which for the get endpoints should be accessed only by admins. And for post endpoint, which creates a new user, we should permit all. Well, we can do that again with request matchers, request matchers. And here, HTTP method post and slash API slash user. This simply means that every, uh, and of course, permit all, sorry, I forgot about this one. And this simply means that every post request to that 
does not require JWT token. Nextly, I mentioned that we would like only armies to access the uh, rest of user endpoints, and we can do that with request matchers. Again, slash API slash user double star has role, and the role name will be admin. Lastly, any other request should be fully authenticated. But what does it mean? Well, in our stateless REST API, it means simply that every user with a valid JWT token will be able to access them regardless of his role. Nextly, I would like to configure session management. Um, we are implementing a REST API, which I would like to be stateless. And to achieve that, we should inform Spring that it should never create an HTTP session, and we want our security to be stateless, and that it should never use it to obtain the security context. To do so, let's get out of here, click Session Management, and in this place, we can configure a session creation policy. It session creation policy state less excellent after that i would like to provide authentication provider which will be the authentication provider we inject in our uh, configuration class authentication provider authentication provider and lastly i would like to add this filter before username password authentication filter add filter before jwt authentication filter username password authentication filter class and the last one simply build wonderful so to rephrase that firstly we disable csrf protection we don't need that again please verify that before you implement that in your real life scenario following we specify the authorization and the rules of our api who and how can access which endpoints following we have the session management we want this to be stateless we don't want to use remember me option and things like that so that's why i am setting session creation policy to stateless after that we specify our authentication provider which we implemented previously and after that we add our filter jwt authentication filter before the username password authentication filter with all of that done we can finally go to the next video and expose the login endpoint which will generate access tokens.